Hello everyone, my name is Edward Massey and I'm the owner of Eddie's Grocer, a Lebanese deli and market in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And today we're gonna to be making Razad Jej, one of my favorite homemade Lebanese rice dishes. It's a Lebanese dirty rice. So think of like a New Orleans or Southern dirty rice, but instead it's not gonna have sausage in it. It's gonna have beef or lamb and chicken, of course. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna start off by dicing up the onion. This is a widely known Lebanese dish. And what's great about it is like the whole family gets excited about this. The whole house smells like the seven pepper spice blend. And it just, the nut mix is so luxurious on top. It's crunchy, it's rice. I mean, it's everything that you're really looking for for like a homey dish. Something that gets you excited to go to your grandmother's house after church on a Sunday. What I like to do is make this a little modern and a little easier because we serve this at Eddie's Grocer. You can use butter to fry these up, olive oil, a little bit of both, which is what I'm doing. Eddie's Grocer is a Lebanese market in Delhi in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and it's crazy. You know, I used to own a catering company. I never imagined in a million years I was gonna open up a little like bodega, basically. You know, the pandemic makes you do some crazy stuff. Throughout my years in New York, I've always had to go to Sahadi's or go down to downtown Brooklyn to buy Lebanese groceries. So I was like, wait, we need a Lebanese grocery store right here in North Brooklyn, which is why I came up with the idea. My butter and olive oil have heated up, so I'm gonna add the onion right in there. You don't wanna get a color on this whatsoever. You really want this to be just translucent. You're starting to smell the onion. You're starting to smell the butter as well, the best. And we're gonna add our beef in. Some people might be fancy and use ground lamb. Some people might use lamb and beef. You can do whatever you want. My grandmother did it this way and we're gonna do it that way. And it's nice to crumble your beef up a little bit before adding it in there. It's also nice to take it out of the fridge for a little bit as well, so it's not super cold and stuck together. And we're just gonna start cooking this. I've always cooked my whole entire life. I've been cooking with my grandmother in the kitchen when I was young, before moving to America. I would come home and eat my Cheez-Its and drink my Diet Coke and watch Oprah Winfrey at four o'clock, and then I would get cooking dinner. I didn't really speak any English when I moved here, so that was, it was, it was a lot because when, Someone like me that doesn't shut up all day, um, it's hard for you to like not to talk, especially as a teenager. I moved here when I was 10 years old. So this was like the way that I got my feelings out and it helped with my mental health, I would say. So now that the color of the beef is starting to change, we're gonna add the baharat in here. Baharat is, it really means pepper, but it's a blend of different peppers. This is a seven pepper mix. So you've got nutmeg in here, coriander, cumin, cinnamon, allspice, black pepper, and nutmeg. Those are all the different things in here. Different seven pepper spices will be different. This one is a Syrian one, a Lebanese one might be different, a Jordanian one is different, and an Egyptian one is of course very different. I know an Egyptian one normally has a lot more cinnamon in it. Add some Bahara in there. And again, I don't measure anything, but that's just me. And that's why I always say the biggest trick in the kitchen is you have to taste everything you're cooking. And always kosher salt all the way. All right, so it's time to add the rice in. And what I have here is some long grain rice. You can use basmati, of course. You can use jasmine as well. I've rinsed my rice and I've got all the starches out and you can kind of tell, I know it's leaking a little bit, but the water now is not white anymore. It's a clear water and that's what you're looking for. We're gonna give this a quick twist. I'm gonna add a little bit more baharat and a little bit more salt. I have this thing with bay leaves. I, I don't I don't wanna say they add flavor. I think they just like bring the whole dish together. If we're gonna add our chicken stock in, homemade chicken stock is obviously preferable, but nobody has time for that. We're gonna add four cups of liquid, always two cups of rice, four cups of liquid. We're gonna put the lid on and let it go. We'll check on it as we go. This should take about like 20 to 25 minutes, but we wanna check it after 10 minutes. I like to twist my pot a little and then let it go for another 10 minutes. My grandmother would never use a rotisserie chicken, but we're in America, so that's, that's just gonna have to change. What we're gonna do is take the skin off of the rotisserie chicken, and then we're gonna shred it. Riz Ajej means rice and chicken, so literally we've got rice and we've got chicken. That's what this dish is. Don't add the drumstick in there and don't add the wings. The wings get a little tough. I just turned the heat on and we're gonna add 
some chicken stock in here. You probably are wondering why you're adding chicken stock to chicken. So it's gonna like tenderize it actually and make it a little fluffier and a little more seductive. And I'm gonna add a whole cup of chicken stock in here. We're gonna just let it reduce. I would say just a teaspoon, nothing crazy of baharat. You just want it to have a little bit of taste and color, but not too much because, you know, there's plenty of it in the rice. Our rice is cooking. Our chicken is just starting to simmer. So now we're gonna do the funnest part, which is the fried nut mix that goes on top of the rice. I love rice, I love chicken, don't get me wrong, but this is what got me excited. This is like the most luxurious part of this dish. We're gonna turn our heat on like medium, medium high, don't go crazy. You don't wanna burn your nuts. I'd rather this take longer than you burn your nuts faster. So nuts are expensive, you gotta be, uh, gotta be careful. So we're gonna use canola oil or vegetable oil because it has a higher smoking point. I think I'm gonna start with my favorite, which is pistachios. And this is all we're looking for, a little bubble all around. You wanna take them off the heat just like a few seconds before you think they're actually fully done. Let's see. All right, so we got all our pistachios out and now we're gonna add our cashews. You know, we're leaving these nuts whole because you want that like crunch. If you're already chopping them up and then you're frying them, A, they would fry up really, really fast. B, like, it's just you're not getting that crunch. So you wanna keep them whole and Whole nuts are more expensive than chopped. Each nut would, takes a different time. That's why we're not throwing them all in here at once. And I forgot to do this earlier, but right when the nuts come out of the oil, you wanna season them with just a tiny bit of salt. We're taking the cashews off now, so this is the color that you're looking for. We're ready for our next nut, which is gonna be almond. We're not using whole almonds for this one because you can't really fry up a whole almond. It's, it's a little too much and it's already brown on the outside. All right, it's time to take these off. I'm gonna go right here. Now we're gonna add the pepitas in there. Our pepitas are ready. That was the fastest one because it's a seed. We're gonna take that right off the heat. And I'm gonna start with a little fresh oil after this for the pine nuts because they're the most delicate nut. A little bit of pine nut goes a long way. Got a separate plate for the pine nuts because they're so delicate. And I'm gonna scoop them right in here. And now we're gonna finish off with the sesame seeds. This is all we're looking for, just a little bit of color. I'm gonna strain this because you don't want a lot of oil from the sesame seeds and they're hard to scoop out. Just like that, we've got all our nuts and seeds ready to go. Now it's time to reveal the rice. Look at that rice, it's perfectly cooked. So now the next step is, I think one of the biggest steps to cooking rice, which is fluffing the rice. And why we do this is so the rice A doesn't stick. If you're just using a spoon, it's gonna get clumpy. So what you wanna do is you wanna fluff it. We're gonna add all our nuts in here, the whole, the whole thing. And then I'm not gonna add all the pine nuts in here. I think it's really nice to use a little pine nut on top, like for garnish. I mean, I made just such a big bowl of fried nuts. We're gonna be eating this for days, months even, which is honestly my pleasure. All right, it's time to plate up. So we're gonna grab the biggest platter we can find, like grandma would do it, a big old platter. And we're gonna start scooping the rice on here. We're gonna start with a really nice big pile of the rice and leave the bay leaves in there. Do not take the bay leaves out. They're part of the rice. Now we're gonna put the chicken right on top. There's Ajay's rice and chicken, so rice and the chicken. Simple, you guys. Now it's time for the funnest part, which is gonna be the fried nut mix. So what we're doing with the fried nut mix is like we're basically making a border on the dish with this. So. We're gonna start here, just like that. Ooh, look at that. Aha. Lastly, a little pine nut on top. And bang, you've got yourself a Lebanese dirty rice. This adjej is ready to go. So we're gonna get a good scoop of the rice, some chicken on top. And then, of course, the fried nut mix. Mm. 
The rice is perfectly cooked. It's fluffy. And the chicken with the rice and the nuts, it's like three different textures, like a little chewy texture, a fluffy rice texture, and then the crispiness. <sighs> Yum. This is my childhood in a plate. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you can find the recipe right below here. And please stop by anytime. We're in Greenpoint on Mezzerel Avenue. Come get your Lebanese groceries, your spices, maybe a little falafel with it as well. And come say hi.